in a bid to address the deteriorating electricity supply across the country. Minister of Power, Adebayo Adelabu, last week summoned the chief executives of the Abuja and Ibadan electricity distribution companies. Also summoned was the managing director of the transmission company of Nigeria, Sule Ahmed Abdulaziz, over the deteriorating power situation. This week's meeting is expected to address issues bordering on worsening electricity supply in the affected regions and what could be done to offer a lasting solution. A statement from the minister's office disclosed that the management of other non-performing discos will also be queried as reports continue to fit in on the situation in their regions. In the meantime, power generation companies operating in Nigeria recorded as much as 27.14 billion in monthly capacity payment losses and stranded generation of over 4,724 megawatts in January and February this year. Stranded power represents available energy capacity which could not be generated, transmitted, and distributed in the value chain owing to system failures. In January, the data showed the available generation was 6,444.05 megawatts, while for February, it was 6,384.36 megawatts, giving an average of 6,414.21 megawatts. The average generation was 4,293.68 megawatts in January, while in February, it was 3,000 809.96 megawatts totaling 4.051.82 megawatts on average. Chief Sunday Odonton, Executive Director, Association of Nigerian Electricity Distributors, and spokesperson for power distribution companies, DISCOS for short, now joins us. Good to have you on the program, Chief Odonton. Thank you for joining us on this live the Sunday talk show. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Okay, we know what the uh, problem is. The Minister of Power is threatening that these schools will be shut down uh, if they do not uh, take power generated given to them. Now, what are the problems? What are the solutions? Can we deal with that? First. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, on the issue of the Minister of Power summoning some the two discos and of course the transmission company of Nigeria, uh, MDCO, there's nothing unusual about that. Um, it's a good thing the policy makers the government have a right to summon the operators at any time. Perhaps such summoning will also shed more light as to what the problems and the issues are. Let's be honest with ourselves. Whatever we failed to do in 1984, will remind us in 1994, by 2004 and 2024, it will catch up with us. Earlier, during the intro, I heard you, Ruben, you mentioned uh, stranded power, you mentioned the stranded, stranded energy, but at the end of the day, the figure you gave was even less than 70,000. The question for all of us is that a country of 220 million people, should we be comfortable generating less than 10,000 megawatts, or should we be talking about even 20,000 megawatts at this day and age? Which means, as a whole, as a nation, we have failed over the years. It didn't start today. We have failed to increase our power generation, transmission, and distribution in line with our growing population. In 1974, 1984, 1994, 2004, when it catches up with you and becomes a crisis in 2024, we don't have to hype it. What we need to do is to sit down around the table and look for solutions. Number one problem in the Nigerian power sector is liquidity crisis. 
Naira and Kobo. It's about money. It is about the ability to be able to make things happen. And nothing will happen when we are not able to get enough funds. When you push, you invest money in a system and you cannot recover your money back. The issue of cost recovery has been a recurrent issue that we've discussed over time. Over the years, the last time I was in a right TV, I mentioned the issue of liquidity crisis, the need for all of us to play our part. And when I say all of us, government on one part, with the operators on the other hand, and of course the Nigerian people, the consumers, on the part of the government, I would love to see a country and a situation where the government ministries, departments and agencies pay their bill. In Nigeria, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Well, Chief, That's don't number talk. one. Chief. Number two, Chief. the government... The go yes? If I can come in here. The federal government, through the minister, yes. is accusing the discourse who you represent. One, that the discourse... Their licenses will be revoked on the grounds of willful non-compliance with the rules, non-performance, and also your customers, the consumers of electricity. They're saying that the discos are as charged of overbilling, of uh, tyranny. People have been paying uh, uh, 300 naira, I'm just using that as an example. You know, suddenly they will get a bill that says 1 million naira. And they think that this is not from government regulation. This is from the discourse doing arbitrary billing. And there have also been allegations by government that discourse reject electricity. You are saying, okay, in a country of uh, two, over 200 million people, they provide 6,000 megawatts and all that is not enough. But even when that is provided, we're told that members of your association, the people you speak for, they reject. So government is saying the discourse are the problem. Can you offer a defense for the discourse? Can you tell us what exactly is happening? Thank and you very and particularly much. arbitrary billing, because all of us are concerned in that arbitrary billing problem. Thank you very much, Ruben Abati. You have actually lumped up about three, four questions together. Yes. I brought about a lot from this question. Perhaps you will permit me to explain from beginning to the end. I'm not here to defend or offer a defense for the discourse. I'm here to defend the whole value chain the power sector of Nigeria, and I'm here to say that as a Nigerian myself, who need the services, who want electricity in Abeokuta, my town, I would rather we all work together to ensure this happens. Number one, uh, the issue of disco bashing will never give Nigeria electricity. We've been on this for long. I've been, well, I can say I'm, on, I'm very fortunate to say that I've been around in the Nigerian power sector since the 1st of November 2013, when these uh, industries were privatized. And in the last 10 years, now over 10 years, I've witnessed people coming and going. So when, when I hear uh, people in government at different times saying, we will revoke licenses, that has happened before. The question you should be asking, Ruben Abati, has that given us electricity? What happened? What led to what? Even when uh, some, uh, the, okay, two discos uh, management were invited from the news last week. Those two discos, the current investors in those two discos were not the investor that bought those assets in 2013. So what happened? Because if, if you say these people are not good, you send them away. Uh, your wife is not good, you send her heart packing, you marry another wife. The first wife, the reason why you said the wife was not good was because you could not perform in the other room. 
So it is the fault of the wife. You send the wife away. You married another wife. Soon after that, less than two years, you are saying again that this other wife is a bad wife. Perhaps there is a need for the household to sit down and look, up, look at what is wrong in the other room. Whether it is the bed, whether it is the diet, whether it is the communication, whether it is the mood, or even maybe there is no electricity in the other room. If there is heat, you cannot perform. So these are the things we need to do. All of us need to look at the problem. There is a value chain in this industry. When you bash, blame, name, claim against the discourse, you forget that the discourse are distributors of electricity. Don't forget that discourse are even the, what I would call the uh, uh, revenue collectors. They are the ones that collect money for the whole of the value chain. And this is a heavily regulated industry. I'm not here to give excuses. The discourse are not efficient enough, no doubt about that. But efficiency is also linked to pricing. But I'll talk about that. Now, generation distribution, uh, transmission and distribution requires a lot of investment. And each time these businessmen invest in these businesses, they expect there to be cost recovery. And when you push 100 million electricity into a neighborhood, and all you get is 13% of your money, and you cannot collect, even some people out of mischief over the years, they will say, go and collect your money. Go and collect. One very vocal Nigerian who was on TV like four years ago, I delivered the research and found out that even in her own community, there are bad customers. So the problem we have is in threefold. That's what I started saying earlier. When I say all of us need to play our part on the part of the government, always try to create an enabling environment for businesses to thrive. Always play your part by paying your own bills. Don't forget, to. Oh, it's only two, three weeks ago that there was a news that went viral that the Nigerian presidential villa were owing an electricity bill. This bill was not paid until Abuja Disco, we put up an advert which caught the attention of Mr. President. Should we have to talk to Mr. President of a nation before the, the, the official residence, the government's headquarters, pay their bill? Check the ministries. You'll be surprised you'll find some ministries that are not supposed to be there who are owing Abuja LLC Division Company. But we are not here to join issues. We are here to plead to say, let us all play our part. I said, on the part of the government, pay your bills. The military, the ministries, departments, and agencies are owing in excess of 100 billion naira. We've been saying this for a long time. They didn't start owing from May uh, 2023. So no politics here, no mischief here. Let's talk facts. Let's see how we can solve problems. So that is for government. Second, we the operators, we also need to step up our game. We need to do things better. We need to deploy more technology into this business. But as we are talking about deploying deep technology or doing this and that, it is also linked to investment. Investment is also linked to pricing. So that now takes me to we the Nigerian people, we the customers, including myself. Customers have a part to play. You cannot continue to steal energy and you are saying that the power sector is not performing. And of course, the people you know are the discos. You don't know the generation company, the producers of electricity. You don't know the transporter of electricity, transmission company of Nigeria. And all you blame are the discos. Now, I will address your allegation on arbitrary billing. I will start by saying that truly, the system is not perfect. Truly, we need to do a lot more. I can also say as a matter of fact, with all sense of humility, that even today we are better than we were as at November, December 2013. But we are not where we are supposed to be. And we are not there because we have not all put together what we need to put together to get to where we need to be. Let us stop pretending that all is well. You cannot run a power sector where the generation company needs to pay the gas suppliers and nobody is thinking for them. Nobody is thinking that they need to get money to pay. You cannot talk about a power sector where the agency that wields the power, fortunately, 100% owned by the government, they also need to be paid for their job. Then you cannot run a power sector where the different companies that need to renew their network, put a lot of things together, 
But every time Nigerians get electricity, those who are metered, they waste their energy because they have no meter anyway. They feel that they can just use it anyhow. Those who are metered, those who even have prepaid meter, 47% of them at a point were bypassed. A few years ago, when we did a, a, a complete assessment of the position of things, we found that out. And some people say, why can't you put in smart meters that will enable you to see things that they try to bypass? That's correct, that technology, but that costs a lot of money. Even with the one we have, people are not paying. So I'm not blaming Nigerians, I'm not blaming government, I'm not blaming operators either. I'm blaming all of us. I'm saying that go to Egypt. It was not long ago that I was in Cairo. Go to Senegal. Mention any African country. Nigeria pays about the lowest tariff on electricity. But people don't like to listen to those facts. What we need to do is to look at the cost of production of electricity. Any product that you produce, the first thing to do is to know the cost of production. It should be the cost of production that should determine the selling price. And that's where the role of the regulators come in. The Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, they are doing a very difficult job because they have to maintain the balance between the interests of the consumers, the issue of the affordability, the issue of the economy, as against the interests of the operators who have to provide the service. For the service providers, the, 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 the uh, regulators also have to look at the economic indices, the cost of production, how these entities can recover their cost. And I must say that for the past 10 years, the regulator has been doing a very commendable, even though very difficult, sometimes thankless. Job. So it is not easy for each and every stakeholder in the power sector. It's about Naira and Kobo. That's Chief, something. Yeah, talking about Naira and Kobo, Chief Odonton, the minister, you know, told us recently that Nigeria is faced with a legacy debt of about three trillion Naira. And, you know, there's subsidy in the electricity sector that the Tinubu government haven't removed subsidy on fuel. Well, you, you know the story of the f removal of uh, subsidy on fuel. <laughs> the subsidy is still there. You know, so what is your view about this removal of uh, subsidy or the payment of subsidy in the electricity sector? Because you are told, even as we, the consumers, complain that what we are now paying is punitive, is uh, hellish. We are being told that there is subsidy on electricity. What's your view on that? With a legacy debt of three trillion. Thank you very much. The, the issue of subsidy is actually a decision that the government should make on their own. When making that decision, they have to think about sustainability. Can they pay? Have they been paying? In 2013, Mr. Jonathan, your former boss, with good intention, promised to make some subsidy payment. He didn't or he couldn't before he left power. And those who took over from him did not pay in 2015, which means government itself, I don't know whether they can even afford this. But this is my personal opinion. Personal. Number one, for government to even be to pay subsidy for anything, whether for petrol or for electricity, government needs to know the people they want to pay for. In other words, you cannot be paying subsidy for a Ruben Nabati on his electricity. Ruben Nabati can afford the cost of No, electricity. I cannot afford it. Ruben them. Nabati can afford no, I cannot the cost afford. of uh, chief, petrol. Please. And if, if government wants to pay subsidy, it has to be targeted at the poor and the needy. And to do that successfully, you have to have a credible sensor, you have to have a database, you have to know those people who are poor. Ruben, you know now, where we grew up in Abelkuta, we know the area and the people who are poor. We know those who are middle class, we know those who are rich. So in taking care of your people as a government, you have to go to the right people. And I'll give an example of the British government. Every September, October of every year, the British government sends checks. They send money to 
all British citizens who are 70 years old and over, old people. The purpose of this is to enable them to pay for electricity and gas during the winter period. If, they, if we are going to do that in Nigeria today, how many people will know how to get to Alaha village in Obafemi in Ugutete to really target my own people who are very poor, truly poor, or old, and the needy, or you want to go to other parts of the country? Without database, that will not work. I think that should be the starting point, and it's not rocket science to get this done. That's what I think. But to say we should have universal subsidy for everybody, subsidizing a man who uses Rolls Royce in Ikejaji or Asokure in Abuja, I don't think that makes sense. So the issue of subsidy is an issue that government itself should sit down and think about. And I, I listened to the minister, and I, I would recommend that people should try and go back to that video clip and listen to what the minister said in terms of affordability and sustainability. But as much as possible, I want to implore everyone, including Mr. Minister, that it will not be a good thing for us to just pick on the poor man below the value chain and make him a scapegoat as if every time there is no light, it is the discourse. A distributor can only distribute a product that has been produced and transported to him. A retailer cannot talk about a product if the product has not been produced. No baker, no retailer of bread can talk about bread if the flour mill has not been able to pay the wheat growers no flour and then the baker has no flour to bake bread or the bake bread, no transportation to bring it to the retailer who can sell. If you are abusing the retailer, you are only making mistakes. We are pretending that all is well. Uh, we need to just be realistic. Perhaps there's a need to really sit down and look at this thing. That is why I said a week ago, I said the Nigerian president should be watching television and should be watching all channels so that he will see what is going on. Because sometimes in Nigeria, our leaders are giving briefing. They read what is written by some other people, but sometimes you need to see it, hear it, and feel it yourself so that you know that things are hard and we begin to look at how to provide solution. The solution to the Nigerian power sector is not rocket science. The solution begins with liquidity crisis and, of course, effective, effective um, regulation and ensuring that things are done in a way that does not just pick on some people at just somebody just feel this one is not good. No. Bring everybody together. Chief, don't Let us see how we can solve the problem. If I don't, I, I, I like your point. When you said uh, the president should be watching uh, TV channels, uh, he should be watching Arise News so that he can know how the people feel. Because here we try to reflect the people's feelings, the pulse of the uh, nation. But before you go, by way of summary, you are saying that nobody should blame the discourse. So if we don't blame the discourse, for the problem in the electricity sector, who should we blame? Briefly, as you wrap up. Well, what I'm saying is that nobody should blame the discourse alone. That people should look at the whole value chain and see where the problem is, and then let us come up with how best we can solve the problem. And I'm saying that if we continue to do this naming, blaming, and claiming, we did it before, and it has not given us electricity. If we continue to do it, there will not be electricity. That's what I'm saying. And for Mr. President, uh, he should be watching all television stations, not just Arise TV. You need to watch all other stations, so that even when you watch both the opposition for, to, for, and against, you can be able to have a feel of what the people think. That is my personal opinion, not that of the discourse. Robert. Well, thank you very much, Sunday Odonton, for joining us on this live, this Sunday talk show.